low moods and depression. It's a good question because today's a grey day and it's raining. But it is weather. And the thing that I keep returning to myself is this analogy of the sky and the weather. Does the sky get wet when it rains? When a tsunami comes, does the sky get disturbed? When it thunders and lightning, does the sky get disturbed? When there are rainbows and great beams of sunlight breaking through, does the sky get disturbed? And to really see that it doesn't, and to try and get an understanding and a sense experientially, to actually sense it, to get it, that who you are is sky-like awareness. You don't change. The one who sees and identifies and characterizes a set of experiences as depression, that one isn't depressed. The one who identifies, characterizes and sees confusion, that one isn't confused. Can we see the weather distinct from the sky? Or to put it another way, you go to a cinema, you come in, you sit down, and the curtain is drawn, and there is a screen. That screen remains there the entire time. Then the movie starts to play, and very soon we've forgotten that we're in a cinema, we're feeling all oh, this emotion coming, you know, our hero has died, we were identifying with the hero, we are projecting with the hero, now the hero's dead. We don't want to look at each other sitting next to each other because we're so full of emotion. And then at the end the film stops and the screen is there again. Nothing that happened on the screen, nothing that was projected on that screen, made any difference at all to the screen. It made a big difference to the people watching it, but it made no difference to the screen. Awareness, not consciousness, awareness is like that screen. It doesn't change no matter what is projected upon it. The thing that sees through our eyes, does it get, if it saw 10,000 puppies getting slaughtered mercilessly, would it actually affect the thing that sees? The thing that the senses report to. Or if it if I saw ten thousand angels spiraling up in an ascension. The thing that is actually seeing that, does that actually get affected? Well, I might have an emotional reaction to it. I might have a lot of thoughts that came with it. I might even have body sensations and tinglings. But the one who's actually aware of it, does that get touched by it at all? In fact, does anything ever touch me? And the answer for me is, no, it doesn't. So for me, when I have, uh, if I have bad moods, I try and objectify them. Try and just look at it. And as soon as you start to objectify stuff, it kind of, even then it, it starts to change. Start to examine it. And also to accept that that's how it is for me right now. Okay, I'm not feeling great. Just because I'm not feeling great, just because the weather's shit, doesn't mean anything. Because you can double how bad you feel by feeling bad in the first place and then making it mean something. Oh, you see, I'm feeling depressed. It means that there's really something wrong with me. Look, it's proved by the fact that I'm depressed. No. 
It doesn't mean anything. It's just weather. And, you know, who I am is not that. So there are very practical things you can do. I was hearing this story about, a terrible story about this person who, his wife died giving birth. And he was like humongously upset, which is like really, really bad weather. And what he did, he was a very wealthy man. And what he did, he just took a job as a bricklayer for two months. And suddenly said, why are you doing this? He said, because I just want to do something simple with my body that simply focuses my mind. Because if I don't, I'll just get sucked into the gravity of my misery. And so he did that. And I don't know if it worked, but maybe it did. Moods come, moods go. So I had to deal with them first to recognize it's like weather, I'm the sky. Secondly, I personally find breathing helps. So like whether that's like meditation, concentrating in meditation, which is always good, or going for a walk, or even rebirthing, breathing more intensely, shifting it that way. And try and remember that, you know, what has come will pass. And the thing that is telling you about yourself and the state that you're in, measuring it, oh, you know, now you're really bad. No, 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 it's really, really bad. This is really bad. You won't come out of this one, you know. It's, it's, it's no, no, you're not. That thing that's chattering there, it doesn't know why you're depressed or anything. It doesn't actually know anything. And if you look back, that internal commentator, it's, it arises spontaneously in accordance with who you're being that you are or that life is in any one moment. So if you're being depressed, which could be caused by any number of different factors, then your internal dialogue will match it, will support it, will arise spontaneously out of it. And so shouldn't really be listened to. It's a time, it's a difficult time when depression is there. And I don't know really if anything that I've said has helped. For me, I meditate every day. And that keeps me generally heading into the wind in a nice trajectory. And things come, but generally speaking, I don't get depressed now. But my heart goes out to those that do. I know people really do.